Oh my gosh. This is bad, y'all. Real bad Michael Jackson. Hello, it's Katie. Welcome back to my channel. I am wearing a sweatshirt that a friend made me. It says Catherine's Kickback. I'm obsessed with it. Anyway, I'm gonna try to keep this intro really short. This is the largest empties video I've ever had, which is really bad because I have been accruing this stuff for so long and I don't even really know why. It's almost just like such a habit and like almost maybe even addiction to like keep my empties. Like does anybody even really care? But I can't just throw it away without like talking about it. I don't know. I'm gonna try to go through this relatively quickly and I'm gonna have to go in a couple of rounds because I have things in categories right now, but then there are things that wouldn't fit. And so I'm gonna have to redistribute those items. I go through a ton of Bath & Body Works hand soap and Bath & Body Works candles. And so I'm probably gonna kind of start there and just really breeze through those as much as possible. So let's start with the hand soap. I pretty much all the time go for this, which is the Bath & Body Works Gentle Foaming Hand Soap. I like that there's a variety of packaging all the time. I like that the scents are really fun and exciting and go along with the season. So I'm just gonna kind of bang through these. I might point out some that are like some of my favorites. The other trouble with Bath & Body Works is that things don't always come back, so it's really hit or miss. But we have Sweet Mint and Rain, Sea Salt and Lime, that's a fun one. Lakeside Afternoon. Winter is an extreme staple. Like it's a really good one for winter time, like Christmas time. Sweater Weather, great for fall. Lavender Vetiver, this was really nice. It's like we can just buzz through this, right? Bergamot and turmeric, coffee and whiskey. Here are some Halloween ones. They smelled really yummy like a Valentine's themed one. These are worth mentioning. It's rainbow cereal and it literally smells like Fruit Loops and no, Fruity Pebbles. I don't know, Fruity Pebbles. And I wish they brought this back because they don't always have it. Let's do the candles. I mainly go through the three wick candles. Same deal, they have fun packaging. They're always changing out for the seasons. They pack a big punch for the scent and you can get them at a decent price, I don't know. Sun-kissed coconut, great for summer. I'm definitely like looking in the wrong area. I apologize, I will try to work on that. Nobody cares. Don't like this packaging, but it's firecracker pop. It was like a 4th of July scent. Caramel cream soda, suntan. This is one of my favorites. They bring this back sometimes, suntan. It literally smells like sunscreen. It's amazing. You can probably see dust particles flying around because there are. Peppermint sugar cookie, winter, so good. Berry waffle cone, this one smells incredible. They usually bring it out in the summer. Mint chocolate chip milkshake, that was fun. I weirdly really like all the Bath & Body Works like chocolate candles, which is very bizarre, but they're really good. Vanilla pumpkin, this was a Target candle. Very good. Pumpkin apple, a staple for every fall. This was so fun. This was Feliz Navidad from this year. I wish the scent was stronger. It was spiced Mexican chocolate, masa, caramel, piloncillo, steam, and steamed milk. Mmm. I really liked this one. If they bring it back, I'll get it again. Banana split milkshake, so fun. Leaves, that's like their best seller during fall. I prefer pumpkin apple, but leaves is good. My favorite candle from Bath & Body Works of all time, which is a fall candle, but they don't bring it back every year. So whenever I see it, I try to stock up is warm apple pie. It is the best smelling apple pie Candle I've ever smelled in my life, like for real. This I just finished off, Palo Santo and Sage. It was lovely, <gasps> tis the season. Staple for Christmas time. Spice Citrus Grove, Wild Berry Jam Donut. This is a nice one, it's called Into the Night. If you ever see it, I recommend it for just like a general scent. It's pretty sexy and it oh, just smells nice. Like if you have company coming over. Sugared Raspberry Velvet Rose, Shimmering Amber and Creamy Musk. It's a good one. Pink Prosecco Frosting, fun lid. Okay, there's probably more Bath & Body candles somewhere, but let's get into some that are not Bath & Body. These are both from Trader Joe's. Salted Caramel and Pistachio, which is 
like the Sol de Janeiro dupe. It was okay. It's just small, so it didn't like emit that strong of a scent, but it's good for like a bathroom or a kitchen. Mango tangerine was good. This is a Bath and Body, no, a uh, Trader Joe's one that I got like last year, like not this past Christmas. This is called Crackling Fruits in the Forest. And this is basically a Joe Malone pomegranate noir dupe. So I highly recommend it. It doesn't perform quite the same, but it smells just like it. I'm pretty sure it sold out really fast this year though. I don't know what this DD brand is. It might be from Home Goods or like Hobby Lobby or something. A parent got it for me. I'm a teacher, but Vanilla Orchid, it's actually incredible. And this like emitted such a nice smell and I love it. I wanted to love this candle so much. It has cinnamon sticks all around it. It's from World Market, but it like just didn't really smell like anything. So that was a waste. Ooh, the Salt and Straw Candle Whiff of Waffle Cone. Imaginary Authors is the brand on that. It smells for sure like a waffle cone. And yeah, it was fun. It was good. I wouldn't repurchase it probably, but it was fun to have. Otherland is a brand of candles I had been wanting to try. I got this at one of the Sephora sales. This one had plum brandy, worn leather, and dried fruits. It's called like old fashioned. And it was definitely like that. Uh, I would try a different scent from Otherland, but I didn't love this enough to repurchase it. The scent that I do love is this Velispa candle in the scent called French Cade and Lavender. I have such a nostalgic, nice memory with this smell. It's just great. Here we also have in the home fragrance category, a Jo Malone Reed Diffuser. So Reed Diffusers are fine, they're nice. I have never had one that works as well as this. Now this is an expensive one, but in my opinion, it's pretty much worth it. I mean, it, again, it is expensive. This is in the scent Pomegranate Noir, which is that scent I was just describing. It's so luxe and chic and pretty. And if you put it somewhere in a room where like, you walk by a decent amount, the people were telling me at the Jo Malone counter, like that's gonna really make that scent lift up and you're gonna be able to smell it. And I think these are really chic and nice if you're able to get one and you wanna try it, like do it. Let's bang through a little bit of body care. I also have a ton of Bath & Body Works stuff. We have lots of body creams, Twisted Peppermint, that's a staple for winter time, Pink Velvet Cupcake, this one was fun, Boardwalk Taffy. Again, I think one thing with Bath & Body Works is like I keep saying, seasonal rotation, like there's always new stuff and the packaging is so fun and exciting and I like all the different scent options. And yeah, it's just great. Another one that I feel is a must have for the winter is Vanilla Bean Noel. This was really fun, Rosewater Meringue. I don't think they'll bring that back, but if they do, yeah, it's hard to talk about this Bath & Body stuff because it's like, this was a rose scented body milk wrapped in sugar body gel, shower gel, like probably won't come back. Sweet Whiskey, great. Sunshine Mimosa, great. Will we ever see those products again at Bath & Body? Probably not. So it's like, why am I even talking about them? I don't know. This was fun. This was from this year at Trader Joe's. Shimmering Candy Cane Body Butter. Sucker for that packaging. The shimmer was intense, which was fun, but it was like, I mean, it's not like I, I would wear this at night under my pajamas, which were like, you know, it was cold. So it's not like I was able to wear like sexy body shimmer with this. The peppermint candy cane scent was like kind of subtle. It was good though. Now a body cream that you can repurchase and that I have repurchased and highly recommend is this. It's by Flamingo, which they carry at Target. This is the deep nourishing cream. I like the packaging a lot and it's just so good. It's not scented, but it has like a little bit of a natural scent to it. And it's deeply hydrating. It just feels luxurious and nice. It looks nice on the skin. It soaks in like affordable. I really, really like that stuff. I'll talk about these products all at the same time. So this is from Trader Joe's, the Brazil Nut Body Butter. I think this was the first product they came out with. And then this last summer they did like the body scrub, the body, that candle. What else was there? Body scrub. I don't know. And now there's like a body oil. It's really good. It's basically a dupe for this, which is the Sol de Janeiro Brazilian Bum Bum Cream, which has a really delicious, like tropical, sweet, oh, it's like a sweet pistachio tropical scent. 
and it's very good and it's way cheaper than this. So highly recommend that. The body scrub was just okay. I liked the, the cream better and the candle was okay. There was another product too, I swear, but I can't remember what it was. Lotion? No. Scrub. Shower gel. That's what it was. I bet it's in here somewhere. And it was good, but it didn't like get sudsy enough for me. But the body butter, love, love, love. I have not tried the oil. I bet it's good. Did you guys see Taylor perform? Freaking you're losing me last night. Are you kidding? Oh, it's going to take me forever, you guys. This is another hand soap where if they ever bring that back, probably with a different packaging, like I need it. It's This was candy corn, but it's basically like a blue blue raspberry. That was like a Halloween one. Ooh, Twilight Rose. That was a nice hand soap. I really like most all the rose ones. Another signature Bath & Body Works scent at the beach. So good. Here's a different one. This is a signature like winter scent, Twisted Peppermint. So good. Aha, found the Brazil Nut Body Wash. I already told you. It was fine, but I wish it sudsed up more. A second one of those body butters because I really did like it. Peach black tea candle. So yeah, I'm trying to go through just body candles and soap right now. And then we'll move into the more fun stuff, which is like the makeup, skincare, hair care, all that jazz. And all that jazz, I'm gonna paint the town. I'm gonna blah, blah, blah. Looky what I found, another flamingo body cream. More candles. Marshmallow Fireside. Fabulous. They bring that back pretty much every year. Lakeside Morning. Fabulous. Don't mind the dust everywhere. I loved this one. It was called Peach on Earth, which was a play on Peace on Earth. It had the like peach and cinnamon and vanilla, and it was like a Christmas candle. I doubt they'll bring it back, but it was lovely. Here's another Bath & Body scent I want to give a shout out to because it's called Happy Vibes. I cut my tubes because there is so much more product left in your tubes if you just cut them open but it's like this bright citrusy um fruity fresh scent and i love it and sometimes they bring it back in like a throwback collection and yeah happy vibes if you see it try it these are some wallflowers they are that warm apple pie scent because i love that scent like i said whoa i don't really use the bath and body works wallflowers anymore I have a lot of cute like plugins for it and like seasonal ones. So sometimes I will, but I just feel like they're not that potent or I don't know. It's like too much to keep up with. I used to be really into it, but the scent just doesn't last that much. So let's do some hair care. Love beauty and planet. This stuff's really good. This is in the sun kissed Mandarin scent, which I like. It's like a good staple drugstore shampoo and conditioner. This is an R Co Death Valley dry shampoo. I like the packaging and I like the way it performs, but it's a little spendy. So, I mean, I repurchased Batiste, which is way cheaper. Like, you know what I mean? This is a Bath & Body Works dry shampoo. And again, they constantly change out like the scents and everything. Like you can't get this Kaleidoscope one, but they weirdly did. It, it's a pretty good formula in my experience. So any Bath & Body Works dry shampoo that you see, give it a try. Plus it smells nice. These were two conditioners. We have this L'Oreal Ever Pure Sulfite Free Repair and Defend Conditioner and this Kristen S Reconstructive Moisture Mask. They were both just okay. I re I bought this instead of buying like a Moroccan oil mask, which is way more expensive and it's just not the same. It didn't smell as good. Like it's just not as fun to use. It was relatively moisturizing, but just didn't hit the same. This was pretty good. It was just like a basic conditioner, but it was nice. This is the way detox shampoo. I use it roughly once a week to like get out product buildup and I like it, but I think I do actually prefer the Bumble, Bumble, the Bumble and Bumble Sunday shampoo. That's just a personal preference, but that way one is pretty good. Kristen S, this is a beach wave spray. There's still product in here. So I don't think I liked this that much. I have other beach wave sprays, like including one by Not Your Mother's or not your daughter, I forget the name of it, but it's like, I think even cheaper and it like works really well. So this was just so-so. This I really did like, it was the Briogeo Farewell Frizz Blow Dry Perfection and Heat Protectant Cream. I especially like this for like now, this hair wasn't freshly curled um, today or yesterday, it's been a few days. And so like when I brush out my curls throughout the week, 
but then kind of want to tame them down. Like something like this is really nice. So I haven't repurchased this, but I would. And then another product that's very similar is this. It's by R & Co. It's the High Shine High Dive Moisture Shine Cream. It's like a similar kind of product to that. I don't know if it has the heat protector element, but I love R & Co. It's just a little harder to find. They don't sell it at Sephora or Ulta, and it's not, you know, like all that affordable. I have more body things, but I do have things to say about them. So I have two bottles here of this Jergens Natural Glow. One I cut open, one I did not. This is a nice self tanner. I started with the fair to medium, which I am a relatively fair skinned person, but I found that it's subtle enough that I was very easily able to just do the medium to deep when I repurchased it. It's a pretty forgiving, nice, like gradual tanner and really affordable and I really like it. One that's a little less affordable, but is quite good is this it's by tan lux it's called the gradual very forgiving but it is only one shade so i don't love that it's not necessarily as inclusive as it could be it's very very runny like the formula is very liquidy but it's good and it smells pretty good the jergens one smells okay too tanners never smell great but that tan lux one smells pretty good these are a product that i repurchase all the time it's the tree hut moisturizing shave oil jessica braun turned me on to these there's a ton of scents i never use anything other than this to shave my legs this is watermelon this is moroccan rose this is another product i got from target by Verst. it's a retinol body lotion the packaging is chic, it was affordable, and I love the idea of retinol for your body, like it was really good. All right, this is a spendy lotion, but it's really good. It's by Kiehl's, it's the creme de Corps body lotion. This goes on sale every year, typically at the Nordstrom anniversary sale, so get it then if you were interested. It's like a staple product from Kiehl's. It's just like a really basic, good lotion, no scent, no must, no fuss. Very hydrating, but doesn't linger. Like it isn't greasy. It can mix with any fragrance. It looks nice on like in your bathroom. I really like it, but it is expensive. So I don't know if I'll be repurchasing it at this juncture in my life, even if it's on sale. Oh my gosh, Lush Rose Jam. If you know, you know. I will never forget, I was in Walt Disney World with a group of friends and one of the girls came out of the shower and I was like, what perfume are you wearing? And she goes, oh, I didn't bring any perfume on this trip, but she had showered with Rose Jam. I think most all of Lush's um, like shower gels and stuff have that effect. They're very strong with their scent, but Rose Jam, it's like this sweet, delicious rose. They make it in like fragrance now and it's just really lovely. These were big around COVID, like 2020, and now Bath & Body Works isn't really making them and it's making me angry. It's the large size hand sanitizer with the pump. I have so many scents, Japanese cherry blossom, sunshine and lemons, sweater weather, warm vanilla sugar. Like I love these as a teacher. I have hand sanitizer everywhere around my classroom. Kids are doing stuff all the time where I'm like, come here, pump, pump. And for myself too. And so if you know where to find some like larger pump hand sanitizers that are like cute or nice or like fun scents that are not just like the Purell, maybe that's like a lame thing, but that's what I like. I have not one, not two, not three, but four Donna Karen Cashmere Mist deodorants. Shout out. Another thing I've been purchasing for years at the Nordstrom anniversary sale. Bougie, bougie, bougie deodorant, but gosh, it's good. It smells so powdery and feminine and it's just really lovely and nice. And I don't see myself stopping that whole thing that I do. I do have this Kopari natural coconut oil deodorant. I feel like I've talked about this before a long time ago. I will use this at night. I'm not necessarily sweaty, but like in Phoenix in the summer, it can be really hot. And so sometimes after I've showered, I'm an evening showerer but I'm putting on pajamas, but I don't want to put on no deodorant. Sometimes I'll throw on like that. And I like the Kapari one, it's nice. Let's do some skin care. This is by the Inky List. I don't know where the top is. It's the oat cleansing balm, like a makeup remover. Very affordable, pretty nice. Doesn't remove all your makeup, but like decent. What other makeup removers do I have? Because I have things to say about makeup removers. Um, Here's one, this was a Sephora brand cleansing balm, affordable, halfway worked. Clinique, take the day off, people talk about this a lot, only partially worked for me. The one that I'm using now does work and so we'll get there. 
The one that I used to buy all the time, which at the time, oh my God, this is embarrassingly like dingy and gross and dusty. But at the time, this was the only product I ever had used that would like fully take makeup off. It's Fourth Ray Beauty BFD Cleansing Oil. This is the ColourPop skincare brand. But then Ulta stopped selling this. Like Ulta sells Fourth Ray, but they wouldn't sell this product. And I just like stopped buying it because I, I don't know, it's just harder to like go on the website, even though it's not, you feel me. And now I have discovered something that really does take up all take up all your makeup. I love it. It's a cleansing balm. I will put a picture of it on the screen. Um, Coffee Break with Sammy informed me about it, but yeah, I really love it. This is a micellar cleansing water, Bioderma. I have two of these. I really enjoy them. This time around when they ran out, this is like what I use for my morning cleanser. I don't cleanse cleanse. I just do a micellar water. Um, I just went to Garnier brand this time around because I'm, you know, constantly trying to readjust my teacher salary out here. And like, even though Bioderma feels more luxurious because it's like a French pharmacy, I was like, girl, just buy the drugstore brand, like the American drugstore cheaper one, you know? And they feel pretty much the same, I would say. Another makeup removing thing is, whoa, whoa, whoa. Philosophy brand purity makeup removing cleanser. I like this, especially when I'm in a pinch, like when I travel, but it doesn't remove everything in my opinion. Okay, makeup remover, Clinique. I actually really like this. And here's the main reason why, because it has an opening at the top versus like a little tiny hole. And that's because I like to stick my Q-tip inside of there, like dip it in there if I need a little bit of extra makeup remover. But again, with the cleansing balm I've been using lately, I don't even really need that much, but I do like this and would repurchase. Let's go through some toners. Toner is one of those mysterious products where I'm like, do you actually work like what's the deal these are two different spray toners this one was my first favorite toner i've ever discovered it's the antioxidant hydromist by dermalogica but honestly i think part of why i liked it so much was just because it is in spray form you don't have to waste any cotton pads or any product you just spray 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 feels nice looks nice but truthfully it's like i guess i don't really know how much it did for my skin but it's not cheap. So then I was looking for another one and Sephora doesn't sell that exact Dermalogica one, annoyingly. So then I tried this Tower 28 one instead, which was a little cheaper. It does have good reviews. I found that the smell was like kind of weird. Yeah, like I didn't really love the scent, but that was only for the first like fourth. The rest of the bottle, I feel like I got used to it. And again, it's a little bit of a placebo effect, but I would repurchase it. I do like it. I have a few Kiehl's products that are worth it. I have both of these actually right now back repurchased and in use. This is the Kiehl's Calendula Foaming Face Wash. I think that Kiehl's does face wash very well. They're a skincare brand. And so they do several things well, but face wash, like I have tried so many of theirs and they're all great. This is like my favorite. It's gentle, it's gel, it cleanses without stripping. It's very foamy, which is just satisfying. Like I really like it. I repurchased it in that big size. This is the eye cream I've used for so long. It's the Kiehl's Creamy Avocado Eye Treatment. It has a funky texture, but it, there's just nothing hydrates better than that. I don't actually know if eye cream is real or if it's like all a hoax again, like if it's all just marketing, but that one is extremely hydrating. And so if nothing else, I'm like, great. This don't ask me where the bottom half is. Oh, I see it, it's on the floor over there. It's just their SPF 50. Um, I repurchase this all the time. First of all, Sunbum packaging, cute, scent, amazing. Product, great. I use this on like my neck and decolletage every day. SPF is obviously very important and I love it so much. Here's another Sunbum product. This is the facial sunscreen specifically. This. Is just so so. I like that it's SPF 50. It doesn't have the yummy scent, but that's probably a good thing because it is for your face. It's fine, it's good, but I'm not obsessed. However, I am obsessed with this facial sunscreen. Kind of spendy, but it's by Shiseido and it's the ultimate sun protector lotion. You can wear it on your face or your body. Super nice. It's like, a, there's like a little thingy in there. It's like a runny texture, but it just soaks in. I love it, I love it. I've repurchased it. It is a little bit expensive, but you can sometimes get it on sale and it's really great. While we're here, I have two of these Shiseido facial cotton things. The girl at the counter told me that why that cotton is so soft is because it is pure 100% cotton. 
So that's great. I do like that stuff a lot. This was a Dr. Jart facial sunscreen I tried. I'm like always trying facial sunscreens, but once I found that Shiseido one, I think that's gonna be the one that I'm sticking with for a while. Here was an Essence brand eye makeup remover when I was in my Girl, You're a Teacher. I mean, I'm always in that phase where I'm like trying to buy things that are like actually suitable to what my salary is. It was fine. Right now I'm using a L'Oreal one that's like still affordable, but like was is better than that. This is a Kiehl's product. It's an oil, kind of like a serum, Midnight Recovery Concentrate Oil. It's great, but I've just gotten to a weird point with skincare where I'm like, is it actually doing anything? I don't know. I don't necessarily not believe that it is, but I just don't always see the results instantly or like, I don't know. Do you feel me? So let me know what you think. Like I liked this, but it's not cheap. And so I'm not running out to rebuy it. I have some moisturizers that I really like. Peach and Lily Matcha Pudding Antioxidant Cream. I like this brand. I want to try more from it. This stuff was really good. This is a classic. It's the First Aid Beauty Ultra Re Repair Cream. It's a great, like, just simple, basic moisturizer. No scent, no SPF, no nothing. It's just going to, like, not irritate anyone's skin, I would say. This, oh, Sweet Chef Beet and Retinol Nightly Firming Mask. I don't know. I gave it a try. It was fine. Nothing to report there, really. These are a couple of Inky List products. We have a caffeine eye cream and a hyaluronic acid. Neither one of them really did it for me. They are really affordable, so that's great. But in my experience, I like the Ordinary products just a little bit better. The Ordinary is very similar in terms of it being very affordable and like simple packaging. One product, however, that I did not super love from the Ordinary was this. It is the Brow... Lash and Brow Peptide Serum. I wanted to love this. We were all rooting for you because it's really affordable. And eyelash and brow serums definitely do work. And so if we were about to get like an affordable one, like that's fabulous. I use this religiously and really saw no results. So sadly, I don't think that's really gonna do it for us. Oh yeah, here's another inky list, rose hip oil. I love the inky, the what's it called ordinary rosehip oil. That one I didn't really care for all that much. It was like pretty whatever. Where else? I know I have a brow serum in here. Oh, here it is. Maybe I'm sure there's something in here. So this is the new brow. This is old packaging, but this is a brow serum. And then there's the new lash. These work. Like, I don't know if you can tell. I mean, I'm not in the best lighting, but like my eyelashes really are really long right now. My brows are pretty like thick and full as well. And that is from these serums. They are definitely more expensive than that other one, but at the Nordstrom anniversary sale, you can get them two for the price of one, which one is a hundred dollars, but then they last pretty well. And if you have the money and you like want to, I can tell you for sure the last serum works. The brow serum does work too, but like, it's just, I don't know, it's just different when you're coating like that area of your face. I don't know how to explain it. A couple of cleansers, the Murad Acne Time Release Acne Cleanser, great. Belief Aqua Balm Jelly Cleanser, pretty good. Origins Checks and Balances Frothy Face Wash, pretty good. Like really liked all of those. Again, I'm like, this is kind of my top notch, but I did like those. This was fun. I don't know if they even still make this. This is by Bliss. It's the Mighty Marshmallow Whipped Radiant Mask from Target, affordable and nice detoxifying mask. Oh, this was interesting. Peter Thomas Roth, pumpkin enzyme mask. So it's kind of like a physical and chemical exfoliator. Smells really good, really yummy in the fall. Um, I liked it, but I don't know if I'd repurchase it. It's kind of expensive. Summer Fridays CC Me Vitamin C Serum. Again, I say, does skincare actually do anything? I don't know. It looks pretty. It felt nice to put on, but it's not like I saw a result necessarily. You know what I'm saying? Here we have an eye cream. Ginseng Brightening Eye Cream by Origins. Wanted to love this. Kind of felt like it was a placebo effect. So definitely prefer that Kiehl's one. This, gosh, you are so good but you're so expensive. This is by Tatcha, it's the Dewy Skin Cream. Anything I've used by Tatcha in my experience is really good. So highly recommend this. It's like just a delicious moisturizer. So luxurious, so nice, but yeah, um, expensive. So that's 
just like a small size. I have a few hand creams. This is from Trader Joe's. It was strawberry scented, but it, whether it's like their regular unscented or any of it, the formula is really nice. This looks horrendous. And I hated the way the packaging like rubbed off, but I did quite like the product. This is by Fenty. Whoa, Fenty Beauty, Fenty Skin. Like, look at that. It fully rubbed off. But this is like the something hand mask. It, I don't even know what it says anymore. It's like this weird, like thick texture. And it is considered a mask. So it's a little sticky. Like it's not meant to just fully absorb really easily, but going to bed at night, like it does soak in and it is just really nice. And I would repurchase that. But again, I don't love that it like rubbed off on the packaging. Like, come on Fendi. Like, I don't know. I just want it to be a little nicer. Peter Thomas Roth Niacinamide Discoloration Treatment. This was like a cream that you could put on like dark spots. I don't know if it really worked. I don't know. Maybe I wasn't as like religious with it as I should have been, but I feel like it didn't work that well. This I don't know how you say this brand, Saseke or Kose. I vlogged about this one time. This was a moisturizer. I think it's a Japanese brand, yes. I got this at Costco, so I have no idea if this is easily available or not, but this was a beautiful moisturizer. It does not have SPF in it, so you could use this day or night and then just put SPF on top. It was like, I don't know, it was just lovely. It was like moisturizing and like, thin and just nice and lovely. And I would totally repurchase that. Let's talk about lips. I no longer support this man, but this is a Jeffree Star Cosmetics lip scrub. This was in pineapple juice. It's fine. These are the Laneige lip sleeping masks. I feel like some people are like, think these are overrated. I don't, I love them. So this is the, what flavor is this? It's either pink candy or original berry. It might be the original berry one. It smells so good. They're just so like the packaging is satisfying. They feel satisfying. They look satisfying. I'm a huge fan of these. This is the gummy bear flavor. Uh, this is like a little small one. It was like lemon meringue or something. Lemon something. Crest. Quick emulsions teeth whitening. If you're consistent with this, it's a really nice, easy way to whiten at night. Sephora brand dry cleaning quick brush cleaner spray. That's great for if you're doing like shadow or something and you just want to quickly like get that color off of the brush. Saint Tropez self tan spray mist for your face. It's good, but like ultimately I had to stop using it because it got gunked up and like if it doesn't spray on you evenly, then it's going to be like a hot mess and there's probably easier, better ways to tan your face, like little self tanner drop droplets in your moisturizer or something. So I wouldn't repurchase that necessarily, but it was fine. If you are still with me, you are the realest real one and it is finally time for makeup. So, okay, let's start here. This is by Beauty Bakery and these were their blending eggs, the sponges. First of all, 10 out of 10 for the packaging, so cute. Beauty Bakery is a black owned brand, so that's great to support businesses of, you know, owned by people of color. The eggs themselves were good. I like them. I would repurchase that. However, I have since discovered like the Paw Paw sponges. I'll try to put a picture on the screen. They're cheaper and in my opinion, better. So there's kind of no going back. I have a few other like kind of actually not really makeup things here. So let's just do those. Bunch of lip, lip products. The Kopari Lip Glossy. Eh. Eh. Kiehl's Lip Balm in Mango. Good. Smith's Rosebud Solve. Now this stuff, I love. Weirdly, the texture of some of these different flavors was different. This one, the original, is my absolute favorite. I've since repurchased it. It's the perfect amount of being like thick, but I don't know. I don't know. Like, But this one, Mandarin something, Rose and Mandarin, it was like a little bit runny. And so the packaging is super cute, but it was like too thin and runny. And this is the Minted Rose. This one I think was like in between. No, this had a good texture too, but it's all about that texture. When it gets too runny, I don't like it. I need it to be a little bit more thick, but overall I love this brand. I've repurchased. Oh, another lip product, the Fresh Lip Balm. Yes, 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 yes. These have been very popular for years and I'm finally getting into them. The packaging is luxe. The products are delicious. They smell nice, they're moisturizing. This one has no color, but the ones with color are really pretty too. Makeup, I keep saying that. And then I'm like, no wait, Deborah Lippman, 
top coat, nail polish top coat. It's called Addicted to Speed and it is a nail polish top coat. In my opinion, this is the only nail polish top coat that I have used, which granted, I don't think I've used that many, where it truly does what it says, which is it'll make your nail, nail polish dry in five seconds or less. So for that, I really liked this and I repurchased this for years, but here's the thing. This is not cheap. And then I don't know about you, but I feel like I've never encountered a bottle of nail polish where you can actually get to the bottom. And unlike my body cream tubes where I can cut them in half and like get all the product, there's no way to do that. And so I end up with like what feels like a fourth of the product left over all the time. This doesn't look like it, but maybe it's just like dried up at this point. I don't know. And so I had, I decided to just stop buying this because it felt like by the time you were getting to like the last third or fourth of the product, it was like a little goopy and then you couldn't reach it anymore. So it does really work, but I just can't bring myself to spend $25 when I had to repurchase it so often. I don't even know exactly how much it costs, but something like that. I have a perfume empty, my friends. And it's a small one, but this is by my favorite fragrance house, fragrance house which is Killian. And this is in the scent Vodka on the Rocks. Oh, it's so good. This is good for anybody. It is like a little bit masculine, but feminine and like neutral and beautiful. If I remember right, it has rose but it's not rosy at all. So I shouldn't have even said that first. That's just the only one I can remember. Maybe it's like musk, rose, and ambroxan. I might be wrong. That's just what is coming in my brain right now, but it's just like a fresh, sexy, it's really good. I don't know how to describe it, but it's amazing. And Killian's lasting power is 10 out of 10, but they're expensive but they're worth it in my opinion. This is a bronzer pan. The reason I saved this is because this is the Charlotte Tilbury, like that big, pretty gold, you know, air flash, whatever bronzer. This is that. They do sell refills, which is exciting, which is why this came out, but I'm really annoyed because my big, pretty gold package has already like come off the hinges now that I have the second refill in there. So I already feel like I'm gonna have to throw it away and just buy a new one if I wanna repurchase like a third pan or whatever. I will admit, I love a big pan of bronzer, but I also love, I just love makeup and I love bougie things and I love things that are pretty. And so the fact that it is in this gorgeous packaging really helps. I don't know if the bronzer itself is actually like that much more spectacular than drugstore alternatives, but it sure feels fun to put your big brush in that big pan and like the gorgeous gold packaging. So I don't think I won't ever repurchase it, but I don't, uh, not right away. I don't know. This was interesting. This was a whipped foundation by Stila. I don't even know if they make this anymore. The lingerie souffle. This thing's like a full on weapon. It's like so heavy, so stunning, so pretty. The formula, eh, eh. Cover effects, water cloud primer. It was fine. Do primers really work? I don't know. In my opinion, the only primer that I like have really thought made a difference was the hourglass primer, but don't quote me because I don't really use primers that often. Holy smokes, we have so many lip products because that makes sense, right? I feel like lips are the things that we like actually go through. Oh, look, there's the updated new brow packaging. Okay, lips, lips, lips. Oh my God, the dust. I can never do this again, you guys. Like I either have to stop saving empties or just like, I can never let it get this big ever again. Let's bang through them. Clinique liquid lipstick in ripe pop. Great, fun, great color, loved. Not like obsessed, but like great. Dose of colors lip gloss. Love, 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 love. This one in the shade Messy Bun was like one of my favorites. The shade, the formula, great. Um, this one has glitter in it and it was fun. This is a color pop, pop gloss that had glitter in it and low key, I think I was like allergic to it or allergic to the glitter. It would itch my lips so bad, but I would wear it anyway. Love this product so much. This is by Bare Minerals. It is the, I hope they still make this. It's like the Gen something matte liquid lipstick. This is in the shade XYZ. My favorite shade is Swag, but it's like such a moussey, nice. It's not like an overly matte drying like like back in whatever year that was 2016 like liquid lipstick it's much more natural it's moussey it smells really nice and they have just like neutral scents this is much more of that like old school liquid lipstick it's by stila back in the day this stila range was like all that this is in the shade perla it's like a nude pink it's like too light for me and i don't wear that much liquid lipstick anymore but 
Okay, I have a lot of concealers. Those are like the things people go through a lot, right? It's like concealers, mascaras. Do I have any more concealers? Oh yeah, we got some concealer. NYX Bear With Me Serum Concealer. I really liked this, but the thing I didn't care for was the fact that it is like a pump. That made it give much more like foundation vibes than anything else. And I just have this little brush that I would use, but I just prefer being able to apply concealer straight on with like a wand. So I wouldn't not repurchase it, but like if they ever changed the packaging, I'd be much more inclined. This, look, I have two of them. This is great. I think I got this on Ulta's website online. It's J Cat Beauty, which is like a random, I don't know, I think it's like Australian, but it's like an affordable drugstore brand from somewhere, from Australia or wherever. This is the Stay Assurance Waterproof Concealer. Great, affordable, really works. Good coverage, but not too heavy. Like, love, love, love. Great. This was okay. This was the e.l.f. Hydrating Camo Concealer. I like the J-Cat stuff better. I don't even really remember this. This was very subpar. Oh my gosh, TBT, Tarte Shape Tape. This also feels very old school. Clearly this has been in here for a while. This is the Ultra Creamy Formula, which I don't really know what that means. I think it was just like a little more hydrating. I've not repurchased Shape Tape in a long time, so I don't know. Is it still like the best concealer ever? Possibly. I've just like gone to other things slash use drugstore concealers, but no, it was good. Benefit Boing, love the packaging. Love that it's like a pencil, an eraser. This was good. I got it at an Ulta sale. I don't think I'd pay full price for it, but I liked it. Okay, L'Oreal Voluminous Mascara Primer. This was fine. I love using a lash primer. This one was just fine. I like the Lash Princess better, and there's an Essence one that I like better that's cheaper. This, ooh, the Bambi Eye Mascara L'Oreal. This was good. I like this. I'm trying to get more into drugstore mascaras because most of these are drugstore actually. Okay, Essence. Everyone loves Essence, including me. Lash Princess. We have, oh, I did not like the waterproof one. I can't exactly remember why. I think that it like actually didn't ever feel waterproof and smudged all the time if I remember correctly for me. The regular non-waterproof one though was pretty good. Then I tried this Essence Mascara, pretty good. I think I like the Princess one better, but good. Oh, here we go. There's that Lash Paradise Primer. I love that. Okay, here are two like non-drugstore ones. This I definitely recommend. It is Sephora brand. It is the Big By Definition Mascara and it's super affordable and it's just like a basic wand and I definitely think this is a good one. Here we have Miss Selena Gomez Rare Beauty Mascara. This, I mean, what can I say? I just love Selena so much. So I don't remember thinking this was like life-changing, but it is really good and I love the packaging and I love supporting Selena, but it's not as cheap as the other ones. You know what I'm saying? But it was good. Brow products, we're almost done, we're almost done. Oh wait, here was another mascara. This is the Clinique Bottom Lash Mascara. I actually really love this stuff. It's like this teeny cute little wand and it's specifically for your bottom lashes. I've not repurchased it in a long time, but maybe I should. I Yeah, I really like this stuff. I mean, it's a little over the top and it's like $14 for that small thing, but if you can, it's it's nice. Okay, brow products. I have three of these. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Clear Brow Gel. This stuff is great. And specifically, I love it in this size, like the travel size, or sometimes they would do this as like a point perk at Sephora. The reason I like this size is because the wand is a little smaller and it just like works perfectly. I think I've tried it in the full size and the wand is like too big. It kind of makes a mess out of your brows, at least in my experience. This is by e.l.f. It is the Wow Brow. Super affordable. This is a tinted brow gel. It doesn't have much hold. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I even say that? Those Anastasia brow gels, they hold like a dream without making it look like weird or like shellacked. But like that's definitely like a, a forever go-to. This it doesn't have much hold, but it does have a little bit of color and it does have some fibers. And so if you're really in a pinch and just want like a two second makeup look or just like a tiny bit of enhancement, this e.l.f. Wow Brow stuff is really nice. It's very cheap. One downside though is that 
it dries out really quick. So it is very affordable, but you don't, it doesn't give you that much mileage, but it is good. Here I have the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Powder. This is like a double, look how old that is. There's like two different shades in there. It's the Brow Powder Duo in dark brown. It's great. Anastasia does brow products so well. Brow powder is a little bit like, I don't know, I guess it's just your preference. Like what method do you like to use? Do you like to use pencils or pomades or powders? Powders are nice. You just have to be careful with them. You have to be careful with all of it. This is the classic Anastasia Brow Wiz. I would not pay full price for this, but when it goes on sale at the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty sale, heck yeah, I'm all over it. Same goes with this, the Benefit Precisely My Brow. The packaging is nice. They both have a spoolie on one end and then brow product on the other. I would not pay full price because I'm pretty sure a drugstore has like pretty equivalent stuff, but I would definitely pay the Ulta 21 Days of Beauty price. Okay, speaking of my girl, Selena, do they even still make this? This is a Rare Beauty Brow Harmony pencil so one side is like a tinted brow gel I like the size of the spoolie a lot but in my memory it was a tiny bit messy kind of similar to that wow brow but maybe just like a, a little more messy and then here we had the brow pencil it's like more of a triangle shape versus like the thin thing from what I remember this was a tiny bit too creamy I feel like with brow pencils they have to be the perfect amount of waxy so that they're not slipping and sliding all over the place. But I just love Selena and I love the packaging. So I would try this again, but I don't remember like loving it. I liked it, I just didn't like love it. This I do love. This is the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Freezer Wax. I know that e.l.f. has since duped this and so I should probably try that. Actually, I think I did buy that. I think that's in my makeup drawer. I just haven't tried it yet. but. This, what can I say? Everything that Anastasia does brow product wise is so good. This makes your brows like as fluffy as you want them or as like whatever shape you want them to be. It was a little hard to get in there with like a spoolie and like it could get a little messy, but I really enjoyed it. We have some eye products. I have a bunch of like these ColourPop Super Shock, no, not Super Shock, Jelly Much Shadows. I love these things, but the problem is they really do dry out and I mean like they're so pretty like this one I'm obsessed with this color is gorgeous it's called no rest for the vivid but obviously like look at that oh my gosh but obviously like you're not gonna wear this shadow every day it's not like a super everyday look and so then the problem is that it dries up with so much product still left in there because I just didn't have time to like use through it before it dried out but they're always really fun if you want just like a fun, shimmery, like wet looking, like fun look, go for them. But they are, they do dry out. Same goes here. These were some glitters from ColourPop. These were from the Hocus Pocus collection. And like, in a way, the argument could be made that like, okay, well, why am I out here buying glitter? Like, it's a little unnecessary. So like, of course, I didn't use them up before they dried out. But it would just be nice if they could stay usable for longer. Speaking of stay usable for longer, I mean, no, that's not really the complaint here. This was a Chanel bougie, hello, what was I thinking? Cream eyeshadow in Terre Brule. I mean, it's just like a pot eyeshadow, but look how much is left. And it's like the, the pigment wasn't that impressive. The longevity wasn't that impressive. Like, I mean, I have a Charlotte Tilbury one that's better and I have maybe something else, but honestly, I feel like the drugstore, like the tattoo, what was the tattoo one that was really popular that was like this? Like for this to be Chanel, it should have performed better. You know what I'm saying? These, however, are lovely. These are the Stila like glitter and glow eyeshadows. I love these. Same deal. They kind of like, what shade is this one? Oh, Smoldering Sun. See, it's dried out. Like you can't even really see it. There's a little bit left in there. Look at that. It's so fun and pretty to put on the lid. And I feel like the packaging of these allows them to stay usable and like moist for longer than other products. Like here's another one. It's like, there's still a little bit left in there, but it's pretty dried out and pretty flaky now. But these are really fun. So I think the trick is to not have like too many to maybe just get one and, and try to focus on using it like as often as you can and then you'll get more mileage out of it. But I do really like these. This is a Laura Mercier cream eyeshadow stick. These are a staple of Laura Mercier and they're fabulous. This is in the shade Au Natural, which is like great for like a no makeup makeup kind of look. 
eyeliners. Makeup Revolution, love. Packaging, lovely. Felt tip black liquid eyeliner, lovely. Do they still make this? I hope so, because it was great. Flower Beauty eyeliner in the shade called Brownstone. Lovely. I love a brown eyeliner. I love to not spend that much money on a brown eyeliner. Sephora brand makes a really good brown eyeliner. Actually, I think that's what I'm wearing today, but it's been on for a million hours. We're so close. Kaja Cushion Blush. This is in the shade Feisty. It's really fun. It has this heart-shaped stamp. And then the blush is down here. And so you would like use this to stamp it on and blend it out. I think this is a Korean brand. It's super fun and cute. The product itself was lovely, like a cream blush. Yeah, I really like this. It just kind of dried out like over time, but I got it. I got my money's worth, I feel. This is a Milani eyeshadow primer. I didn't love this nearly as much as everyone said. Like it was so great. I still, without a doubt, prefer my Urban Decay eyeshadow primer. My shadow would like crease and not last as long with this for sure. This is fabulous. I would love to repurchase this because I have not purchased it in a minute. This is the MAC Mineralized Skin Finish Natural Powder. I'm in the shade Medium or Medium Plus. It's just like a really nice, finely milled pressed powder that offers me like the tiniest bit of coverage, but not really. But yes, and it sets things and it doesn't make you totally matte, but it doesn't make you super like shiny. It's just, it's just like the Goldilocks of powders. It's just right. And last but not least, we have two setting sprays. This is the L'Oreal Lumi Shaping Glow Mist. I used to love this stuff. I remember I bought several of them when they first came out. I don't even know. That's the thing with drugstore. I feel like they discontinue new products way more often than like bigger makeup or like not bigger, but like higher end makeup brands. I don't know. Smells lovely. Packaging is nice. Price is right. But I'm pretty sure the number one ingredient is like alcohol. And I would consider buying this again, but I think it was like a bit of a farce. Like I don't think it actually was that glowy or like good of a setting spray. It wasn't bad, but I think it was more just like a gimmick. And then this is the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Finish Setting Spray. This is a great one. It definitely works. It definitely locks your makeup into place. And it's great. I think I might prefer the Urban Decay All Nighter, which is what I put on this morning. I think it holds your makeup in place just a tiny bit better. Just a tiny bit better. But this is also good and it's real pretty, so. There we have it. I can't believe I just had to waste over an hour of all of our time to do that. Thank God I can now get rid of all these packages and just feel purged. And I hope you got something out of that because it's been a long time coming to quote our girl. Yeah, we're big Swifties here if you didn't know. So, okay. Love ya. Let me know what you think. Have you used any of those products? Do you have any recommendations, must-haves? Let us know. Love you. Subscribe if you haven't already. Bye.